Hello, welcome again to Rue's Musings. I am Becca Rue. Today we are talking about everybody's favorite topic, death. Probably not everybody's favorite topic. But um, uh, this weekend, I, uh, this past weekend, lived through one of my probably life's biggest fears, and that is my dog, Chubbs the dog, who was almost 13, passed away. And I have a couple of things I want to share with you inside of that, and a few prefaces first. Number one is I haven't experienced a ton of death in my life, so let that be what it is. A lot, not very many people who I'm close to or animals that I'm really close to in this way, like I was with my dog, have died. And two is I'm not suggesting inside of this that this is how everyone should always deal with this subject for the rest of their life. I just feel compelled to share some of what I have noticed inside of this uh, transition, inside of my life. Um, Chubbs was my favorite being in the whole entire world. And when you sign on for a pet, it's one of the things that is clear for all of us that we sign on for. Most likely we're going to outlive them. And so five years ago-ish, I mean most of his whole life, but certainly as he was getting older, I really made sure to smush my face against his face. It was my favorite thing to do. Smush my face against his face and tell him that he was the love of my life and the greatest dog in the world and that I so appreciated him. And I really did that three to five times a day, every day. And looking back, I, I hoped while I was doing it that it would help this transition feel better. And it, it has, that I made sure that I felt like I spent quality time with him. And walking my dog every day was, it was often a pain, you know, to have to go home and walk in 14 degree weather. But I was like, you have to show up for him in this way. This is what he loves. It's not my, you know, walking my dog now, of course, I'm just like, I'd give anything to walk this dog again. But it, you know, it's not first on my list, but it was first on his list, so I, I made sure to do that for him. And um, inside of this particular passing, we were unbelievably held in grace, the two of us, that I got to be with him on the floor, petting his paws, and it was just natural. I mean, he was feeling a little bit sick for five days before that. He was supposed to go to the doctor two days after he died to find out what was going on. And it wasn't really looking like it, it was that serious, although he was an old dog, so it potentially was, and he just had a heart attack most likely, and um, I got to be there with him, and I think that helped to, ex I was there, I saw him be alive, and then not alive anymore, so I imagine that, that I just feel like the questions around, like, is he really gone, as I watched him leave, which is painful and beautiful and grace-filled for sure. And um, at first I felt sort of at peace with it, I think because I was so, so, so nervous about how, how this was going to happen. And I, I'm sharing this more like that we're nervous about things in our lives. And I, in high school when I broke up with my first boyfriend, it was probably still to this day, maybe embarrassingly, the most painful thing I've ever gone through, little Princess Becca. And I remember being like, I'm going to study this because I was t scared about going through a breakup as I was scared about my dog dying. So I want to kind of take take the witness perspective and, and watch and see like what are the phases of this so that I can understand it better for next time. And the first, it, I mean I, we cried a ton and I'm, I think I can get through this video without crying but it mostly I, I was, because I witnessed it, I was like okay I, I can be at peace with this that he he's passed on and he was old and um, it was his time and we were completely held and then my the mean brain took over and I, I'm I'm interested about our mean brains because I think it's something that we all share. That deep in my center, I was I I understood that this that everything was exactly as it had to be, and still, I I mean I replayed. I was like, this is what happened on the 30th, and on the 31st, and on the first, and on the second. And if I had pushed them back, if I had been more aggressive, then maybe we could have. And and so our brains do that. And to watch the waves of these things, I think, is important to understand that. Our, how we feel at one moment is how we feel at that moment, and most likely it's going it's going to change. And my mean brain took over, and you know I sent the text to the doctor of could I have done something else, and felt like maybe I wasn't good enough, right? Isn't that what we all struggle with so much that I didn't do enough, and that I wasn't um, proactive enough, and that maybe I could have prevented this whole thing? But when your dog's almost 13 and it's a big dog, he's a golden retriever husky mix, that it, it was his time. 
Another thing that I think helps uh, has helped me through this process is really loving the rest of my life. And this is a huge, huge suggestion for me to make, and it is synonymous with what I'm always saying in these musings. But I got to come to a community of, of classrooms that I love and share my truth throughout this. And it's been, you know, the class is crying with me, and we get to then move through poses. So I still feel like the rest of my life feeling connected and meaningful helped hold us, me and Randy and Chubbs, throughout, throughout this process. I made some notes today. Let me make sure I am getting this. Oh, I, uh, I'm super interested, and we all know this, it's again a common human thread, in when our bodies respond to emotions. It happens when I'm about to sing for people that I'm like, oh, I might sing the song, and you know, your belly turns or whatever, and that, that has been really interesting, that our head and our heart and our belly, or my head and my heart my belly, have not always been on the same page. That at times, I'm like, okay, I, I think I'm, I can open and accept that my, my dog is gone, and I'm like, let me check in with that, and I, I say to myself, Chubbs is gone, and my belly just, I just feel nauseous, like I want to throw up. So my head's at peace, and my, my stomach isn't, and that I think is something that I hope we learn is, is the nature of being a human being, that all of your, the parts of yourself are not going to line up and agree with one another most of the time they disagree. Oh, this is a big one. I learned I was really worried being a dog owner all the time about about Ch I was worried about him about his knee and about his diet and about his bowel movements and about if they taking good enough care of him and you know him getting hit by a car it was a ton of worry and this has been probably maybe the most profound lesson for me is the worry wasn't worth it that the you know our worst fear of our pets dying is most likely going to come to light in our lifetime and Looking back, it didn't serve me, it didn't serve him, but just to love him fully, to love ourselves fully as well, through the process of being in relationship, I think is invaluable. And more, um, appropriate's not my favorite word, it's more in alignment with who we want to be than like, oh no, should I have? And that's what the 20% the mean brain did, like, what if I had done this, would, would things have been different? All in all, I think this is my final, the waves. All in all, he is, and I feel this when you look at the pictures of him, he's, in, he's held inside of me always. I think a dog is particularly hard because they're your every day. You know, you're, I, as a human, we're responsible for our dogs, and that's a huge loss. Like, every night I'm supposed to let him out and give him his medication, and he's not there for me to do that. So I'm like, what am I gonna think? What am I supposed to do with myself right now? But he lives inside of me, and I feel that for sure, and I'm grateful for that, and will always be with me. I know that. And otherwise, and I think in conclusion, throughout this process, I feel compelled to teach us to move courageously into the unknown, and where there are no guarantees, that which is most of our lives, as well as really learn to be gentle with ourselves. And inside of the grief process and the waves that, that come, we need to learn to be gentle. A spiritual practice, um, we chanted for him and did a lot of meditations and watched his pictures in one of our meditations. So having, having a regular spiritual practice has served me magnificently. So there's a quote of Iyengar's, that says um, something like, and I'm going to bash this for sure, botch it, botch it. Um, we don't have to practice every day, but there comes a time in our lives, like when our biggest fears are realized, that we're glad that we have practiced every day. And I absolutely feel my yoga practice, the meditation and the chanting and the asana supporting me through this. So it's worth it. I mean, it, this is like my thesis. It's worth it for you to create that for yourself, how whatever it shows up, and I don't think my way is the way for everybody, but now's the time for us to love fully, tell the people you love that you love them, be gentle with yourselves, and create a, a spiritual practice that you can depend on when your life gets hard. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.